When you look out over our beautiful mountains and you see fields of pillowy, untouched snow, it can flick that switch in your brain that makes you want to get out there and get some fresh turns. But before you head out to the backcountry, you need to be avalanche aware. The backcountry can be a very dangerous place, and if you're not prepared, it can turn your dream day into a nightmare. So we're gonna head out and learn more about avalanche awareness and avalanche safety on today's Where You Live. I'm at the top of Blackcomb Mountain, and in my quest to learn more about avalanche safety, I've come to the avalanche safety hut and this is the kickoff point for the avalanche awareness tour and I'm here with the avalanche awareness tour guide Matt welcome Matt to the Thank show you. so tell me a bit about the tour yeah the the tours are offered every day it's a free tour departing right here and uh, they're designed to really just create more awareness uh, awareness for people that are thinking about going into the backcountry we're seeing a, a really large increase of backcountry users so this is another educational tool to help people that are looking to get in the backcountry. Okay, and do you have to be a certain level of skier to do the tour? As long as you're an intermediate level skier or, or beyond, then that's what we're looking for. And where do you go on the mountain during the tour? For the mountain, we would go to different areas depending on you know experience and skiing level. We can really kind of go anywhere that's inbounds on the mountain. So you're going out daily on these tours. Um, do you, you change? It sounds like you change the tour each day according to maybe who's on the tour. Do you tweak it according to what people are looking to learn? Yeah, we do tweak it. It depends on their background. Some people, this is their first exposure to understanding what avalanches are. Or some people have taken a multi-day avalanche course in the past and just need a refresher. So it's a good time to uh, go over that information and we would alter the tour that way. So you're really seeing all sorts of different levels of, of people that are learning to gain different information. So that's great, you can kind of change it on a daily basis. Um, what do you point out while you're on the tour, while you're kind of cruising around the mountain? What do you show them? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about weather and obviously the influence of weather on avalanche conditions. We'll go around the mountain here and look at terrain, terrain features. In here at the avalanche hut is uh, a lot of information in terms of the avalanche danger scale. We're looking at the current bulletins, uh, what the conditions are for that particular day. And then we can go through and looking at some essentials for the backcountry. We'll also go over to the, the beacon plot and actually look at a scenario sort of like in the event of the worst case, someone was buried, how to use the tools that we have, a transceiver, a probe, and a shovel. But the focus is largely on um, education so that we, we can avoid that scenario happening in the first place. Okay, so say someone's come out, they've done the avalanche awareness tour, but they're looking to learn more. What is the next step for them? Yeah, so this is just really the beginning. So if someone has done this tour and they're like, you know what, I, I, I do still want to get into the backcountry and learn more, uh, I would recommend the next step being an AST course, an avalanche skills training course, which is typically a two-day program. Uh, be beyond that, um, always going out with people that are more experienced, um, you know, following sort of a mentor, uh, always being very prepared when you're heading out there. And um, also it's great to go out with a guide, you know, a lot at the beginning and uh, you can learn a lot that way. And then there's a whole bunch of different levels of courses beyond that, um, you know, a four-day course, a seven-day course, you know, a full winter course, or um, you know, potentially all the way up to becoming, you know, a, a PhD in snow. Okay, yeah. wow. <laughs> so lots lots you can do out there yeah. to learn more about avalanche awareness um, and avalanche safety. So thank you so much for chatting with me today. Appreciate it. Welcome. And of course, we always encourage people to get out there, learn as much as you can about avalanche safety, especially if you're going to be headed out into the back country. I'm actually going to be speaking with a patroller coming up next. We're going to learn about more about inbound safety, and that's coming up after the break. We're up here on Blackwell Mountain today learning more about avalanche safety and avalanche awareness. I just found out a lot of information about the avalanche awareness tours that they do here at Whistler Blackco. And now I'm here with patroller Darlene, who's going to teach me a bit more about what Ski Patrol does. So Darlene, tell me a bit more about what Ski Patrol is doing up here. Well, primarily people think that we're here for first aid. We do a lot of first aid, but there's many things that go on in the mountain here. 
uh, that maybe you wouldn't realize. We try and make it as user-friendly as possible, signage, check the runs to make sure that nothing has happened with grooming and avalanche control. So what are you guys up here doing for avalanche control each day? At 6 a.m., a group of patrollers come up. We meet up at the Alpine shop and we start trying to come up with a plan of what our attack on uh, the snowpack is going to be that day. So that means doing weather, having group discussions, trying to figure out how we're going to deal with what we've been handed for the day. Okay. What are some of the ways that you deal with tackling the avalanches or potential avalanches? That would be ski cutting and using explosives. Mm -hmm. So there's a few ways that we deploy explosives and that would be hand charging, avalanchers and heli bombing. Okay. And what is ski cutting? You mentioned that earlier. Ski cutting is a technique that we use that puts us in the spot where we think that the avalanche is going to initiate. And if all goes well, the slide should go at your skis. What happens after that? Well, then we want to put ourselves in the position of ski cutting those slopes again, skiing them, making sure that the hazard is truly mitigated and that if there's any possibility of anybody getting caught in an avalanche, it's going to be us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys do, are doing a lot of work here, like very early in the morning, you guys are up, you're on it, you're creating a safe environment, then you're double checking that environment. <laughs> we sure are. Yeah. So everybody should feel very safe here at Whistler Black Home, thanks to the patrollers, of course. So as a patroller, you've been doing this for 20 years, Darlene. If you could put the word out there to, to our audience and to let them know anything that you feel that people should really know about what patrol does, what would it be? I think that would be that on any given day when the snow flies, Mother Nature is gonna give us any different scenario of in a snowpack. So we are trying as fast and effectively and safely to open that terrain for you guys. We are not saving any powder for ourselves. We are giving it out there, our 100% to open that as fast as we possibly can. So mm -hmm. be patient. Be patient. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good <laughs> message. People get impatient sometimes, you know, they're, they're keen to get up there and get their runs in. But yes. of course, we always want them to be safe first and foremost. And that's what Ski Patrol does. So yes. thanks so much for chatting with me today, Darlene. Appreciate that. And you know what? They're cute. They're cuddly. They're avalanche safety dogs. I'm so excited to meet one. And that's coming up after this. Here at Whistler Black Home, avalanche safety dogs are part of the team and no offense to the patrollers, but they do kind of steal the show a little bit, especially little Kitty here, who is an avalanche dog in training. And I'm here with Tasso, you're the ski patroller that's in charge of Kitty. So tell me, uh, why is it important to have dogs on your team? Uh, well, with the proximity of us, Whistler Black Home being so close to the provincial parks and with the increasing number of, uh, you know, winter outdoor enthusiasts out there, our service as a resource so uh, proximal to these locations, is, it's kind of vital to the community. Mm -hmm. We're there to help people and we can respond so efficiently. Mm -hmm. So avalanche dogs, when you're choosing one to join your team, what makes that decision? Um, well, it's important to have a dog that likes to please their owner. And uh, you know, Kitty is a, a chocolate lab and she'll do anything for us quite often. Other breeds out there like Border Collies and uh, Golden Retrievers, they really are there to please their owners. You know, no, no offense to the Huskies out there or anything like that, although Huskies tend to kind of, they're there for themselves. They're there to run, run, run. Mm -hmm. Where these guys, they, they've got, you know, good people skills and uh, they've got thick coats and they're quite agile. Okay. And what's involved in the training of an avalanche safety dog? Well, with Kitty, she's still in her younger stage here where she's, uh, basically behavioral training. So we just want to teach her how to kind of come up the mountain on a chairlift and to uh, ride skidoos and to be able to handle the sounds of the mountain. Eventually we work towards uh, obedience skills and searching. Uh, we want to teach the dog to play the greatest game of hide and go seek, which <laughs> they really enjoy to do. Yeah. So let's say we're looking at an avalanche scenario. How is a dog going to help you as a patroller? Well, 
you know, if, if you were in a situation where you just sort of skied a run and all of a sudden you went back to that same run, you saw an avalanche had happened, um, what the patrol can do is look for surface clues or pull out their transceivers, but what the dog can do for us is make sure that we know that there's nobody in this unwitnessed avalanche, mm -hmm. which helps everybody in the end. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me and joining uh, me with Kitty here. She's adorable. So good luck with all of her training. I really, as much as I love dogs, I hope that I never have to encounter you and Kitty on the mountain. <laughs> So all thank right. you so much for chatting today. Thank you. Um, and it's been so great talking to all the pros here at Whistler Blackcomb about avalanche safety and avalanche awareness. But I thought it'd be great to really talk to somebody who's been in an avalanche themselves. And I think that that's going to be a really interesting perspective for us here today. And that's coming up after the break. So I'm here with Wayne Flan, who is a ski patroller, avalanche safety guide, and a bit of a, the avalanche professional locally here in Whistler. Welcome, Wayne, to the show. Thank you very much. So tell me a bit, how did you get into skiing? Um, I started skiing when I was 14. I was a hockey player, and then um, it was getting a little rough, and I decided I'd try something new. And luckily, a ski hill was developed in my hometown in Camelton, New Brunswick, and I decided to try it. Luckily, there was a coach there who took me under his wing, and he taught me how to ski. And uh, by the time I was 18 years old, I was an instructor, I was doing a bit of coaching, and uh, I went to university with skiing. It was always part of my life. Um, when I was at school, I was in charge of the ski club, the coach for the ski team, race for the ski team. So it's been a big part of my life. And then when I graduated, I decided to come to Whistler because I wanted to ski in the big mountains, much bigger than New Brunswick, and uh, started you know, teaching here and coaching a little bit. Uh, fell in love with the place. Never did uh, pursue a career, kind of became a ski bum. Well, almost. skiing is your career. It, skiing is my career, <laughs> yes, it's yeah. very true. And when uh, did you take your skiing to the, this, the next level where you're, you're learning about avalanches, you're studying avalanches? As soon as I moved here and realized that I was in you know, the big mountains and there were lots of hazards, um, I took some courses, uh, just an introductory course to avalanches from Chris Stratham, who is a, a very famous avalanche guru in Canada and uh, took a whole bunch of courses uh, after that. I uh, became a ski patroller in 1984, and that's when my career really started off as far as being a professional. I was thinking about becoming a guide at the time. I went on a trip around the world, came back in 1984, started ski patrolling, took another avalanche course, and then I had the opportunity to become the avalanche forecaster at Blackcomb in 1986-87. Took some more courses, became a forecaster, and uh, after that, just stayed in the business. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, a lifetime of skiing for you and studying everything that has to do with skiing and ski safety. It has been, and uh, I started a company back in the late 80s uh, doing some consulting work for the film industry, and that was also part of the avalanche thing, but more helicopter safety, and I pursued that and I still pursued the ski patrolling, and at one point in time I became a paramedic. I wasn't so keen on being a paramedic, so I went back to ski patrolling, uh, a bit of heli ski guiding. So I've, I've had a fairly large scope of what's going on in the mm -hmm. whole industry, yeah. and um, Absolutely. I still love it. Absolutely, yeah. Well, like you've, you've really much covered the gambit here. <laughs> so I really want to hear the story, I understand, a few years back, that you were caught in an avalanche. So can you tell me about that story? Um, I was caught in an avalanche. I was working with a film crew and we were just north of Pemberton in the Pemberton Meadows. And it was one of those days where I was a little, you know, the hair was in the back of my neck and I, I was ski cutting and there were stiff slabs and I was doing a good job of ski cutting, making sure everybody's safe. And then when I was doing a ski cut, I was going across the slope, basically hit a rock under the snow and it kind of veered me off to the wrong direction I wanted to go in. So suddenly I'm on this avalanche and I started skiing off to the right. And just as I was about to ski off, the avalanche grabbed the tails of my skis. So I was, my tips were on snow that wasn't moving. My tails were on snow that was going probably 80 kilometers an hour. It spun me in the air and uh, broke my leg in the air. Both skis flew off and I landed on the avalanche debris and rode it out like a crazy carpet. So it was, it was a pretty wild ride and I knew I couldn't swim because here I am with a fractured femur. And luckily I landed on a bench and I had had all my safety gear in the helicopter and one of the, you know, the other people that was with me, they, they knew a little bit about first aid, not a lot, 
So anyway, we landed the helicopter, we packaged me, and we flew me to the clinic, and then I went to, to the Vancouver and got my finger wow. fixed. Oh my goodness. But it was, it was a very a crazy day because it's the first time I've ever been hurt by an avalanche in my career. Mm -hmm. So tell me, after all of your years of training and you're caught in this avalanche, how did the training affect kind of that moment when you were caught in the avalanche? Did it help you? Did it, what was... Well, there's anger because, you know, here I am getting caught in an avalanche and I knew that I broke my leg right away. So I was very mad at myself and very happy that I didn't get buried and I was still alive. Um, it wasn't a huge avalanche, it was about a size two, two and a half. But still, um, I think that just, you know, knowing that, because I had a broken leg, I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So I just remained totally calm and still. Yeah. And just wrote it out like being on a toboggan. Mm -hmm. When you're caught in the avalanche, is it like running through your brain all the things you should be doing to keep yourself as safe as possible? Oh, for sure it is. And, you know, but knowing that I couldn't do that, because I mean, <laughs> Fractured femur is no fun, mm -hmm. and I absolutely knew right away that I had fractured my femur. Mm -hmm. So what happened after the avalanche? Basically, I just organized myself and the people who were there with me, and we got me in the helicopter, and I flew to uh, Whistler here, and then eventually they transported me down to Vancouver General. I had a great surgeon who put a pin in it, and basically I haven't had any problems with it since, so I was lucky that I had a very good surgeon. Mm -hmm. And when you were up there, I mean, I'm assuming you had all the gear. You've got shovels and probes and... Oh, we had all the gear. Yeah. Everybody in my group had, you know, the safety gear. Um, luckily, you know, none of them got buried. It's, it's amazing how many times guides and ski patrollers actually put themselves at risk to help the public or their clients. And that was one time where, you know, I calculated a ski cut. I thought it was going to work didn't and unfortunately you know I, I had an incident mm -hmm. and I think that can just attest to that it doesn't matter how trained you are how well prepared you are and that anything can happen so you just never know you, you never know with avalanches I, I always say there are no experts um, unfortunately a lot of people who know a lot about avalanches do get you know buried in avalanches and some people do die in avalanches they can be very experienced guides they can be novices it doesn't really matter. Avalanches don't recognize you as an expert. So, mm -hmm. you know, if it happens, unfortunately, you may suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your blog. You have an incredibly popular blog and social media following um, because, you, you know, you're considered the expert here in Whistler. So tell me, how did all that get started for you? Yeah, I, I don't really consider myself an expert because <laughs> <laughs> there are no experts, like I said. But um, it was a year, about six years ago, and the snowpack was not nice. It was uh, early in the year. We already had quite a bit of snow and some crust that I was concerned about. So I thought, how can I you know, get the information out there? So I started my blog and uh, started getting the information out and started getting more followers. So you know, this is like six years ago. So in the past six years, it became very popular and a lot of people look at it every day. And then I, I got more, not just about the avalanches, but about the weather and trying to like, you know, guess the weather, what it's going to do. And, guesstimate how much snow is going to fall in storms, which is kind of fun. It, it's kind of a game for me and, and a hobby. So I just wanted to get, you know, information out there about avalanches and how it affects people and how you can be safer in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Well, you seem to be doing a very good job because like I said, it's a very popular blog that people follow religiously. You've got lots of followers on your social media as well that are following you. So I think that, you know, people hold you in pretty high regard. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, for me, I, I'm just an ordinary ski patroller that does, you know, likes to ski, likes to be out in the mountains, mm -hmm. and all I'm trying to do is instill more information so that people can be safer. Mm -hmm. That's my whole objective and goal about the blog. Yeah. And looking to the future, do you have any other things planned? Right now, I've been working on trying to get an avalanche conference in Whistler. Uh, it's mm -hmm. extremely expensive to have a conference here, so I've been trying hard. It's, it's hard to, you know, get the first one off the ground. So I'm going to try again this year. I've been trying to get government funding. I'm trying to get corporate funding to have this event. I want to make it as uh, cost efficient as possible so that people can come here without having to pay a lot of money. And I want to make it a, an annual event where we have a, a conference here in Whistler where we can talk about avalanches, but more just about safety in the mountains and how you can be better equipped and just know about what's going on social media wise, 
uh, it's important to understand what is going on out there as far as conditions. And we have a, an amazing system in British Columbia where the, the information is there. You just have to learn how to use the information and then take courses, learn how to uh, travel in the mountains safely, and then get a mentor so that they can help you learn what you have to do to stay safe in the mountains. Mm -hmm. What would be your one piece of advice for those watching at home, um, if you could give anyone some advice? The, the, the main piece of advice would be to basically take an avalanche course, whether it's an AST1 and then you go into an AST2, or even just an introductory course so you can learn a little bit about what avalanches are all about. So education is the key. Like if you can get educated uh, on the subject and learn how to use the tools properly that you have to be safe, then you will have a better experience out in the mountains. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Really appreciate you yeah. telling me your story and we hope that that never happens to you again. <laughs> no, I'm hoping it never happens again either. After, you know, 35 years in the business and getting, you know, bitten once is not too bad. I mean, I've been caught in other avalanches, but never hurt in an avalanche. Yeah. Well, good luck to you and keep on enjoying those mountains and being an inspiration. Thank you to very much. There. It was a pleasure talking yeah, to you. Yeah, no problem. You're very welcome. Um, and do remember that you can always check out Wayne's blog. It's wayneflanavalancheblog.com if you want to have a look at that. And you know, the enticement of getting out there into the backcountry and getting all that untouched powder is, you know, it's pretty special, but just make sure that if you're headed out into the backcountry that you are trained, that you have the gear and you know how to use it. And of course, every January, Worcester Black Home hosts Avalanche Awareness Day, so you can get out there and build on your knowledge, build your skills, and just learn that much more to keep safe out there, because it's important to keep yourself, as well as the people that you're with, safe when you are out in the backcountry. For Shaw TV, I'm Christy Alexich. Stay safe, have fun.